This week on Inside the Headset, we are featuring Campbell University head coach Mike Minter. In this episode, Coach Minter speaks on transitioning Campbell from a non-scholarship to scholarship program, details the commonalities of a great team that he's found across various levels of football, and shares the impact that former coaches have had on his coaching career. Now, let's get Inside the Headset with Coach Minter. Coach Mentor, what's going on? How are you? Uh, well, you know, at the tail end of spring ball, everything is going well. Um, you know, so life is good. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Well, uh, hope everybody's staying healthy and uh, it's it's productive. And you know what? I was I, I can actually dive right into the question since we're talking about spring ball. Um, you got two new coordinators, one on each side of the ball. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, heading into twenty two. What you know? What what are some of the things you want to accomplish and and, and kind of implement new systems with with your players, with yourself? Make sure you're familiar with what your guys are going to do. You know, what do, what does spring ball look like when you're implementing two systems? Well, well, here's the thing. I when I got with the coordinators, the, the people I chose. This is really a lot of my offense and my defense as I see. Okay. So it wasn't it wasn't a hey let let me go get somebody that's gonna run this or run that. Nope. This is I've been nine years now. I know what I want. I know right. what it should look like. And here go the things, right? So um the thing was what I wanted to see was the ability of the tackling and the blocking. Okay. Okay. I don't care about how many plays we get in or what what percentage of the plays we get in. I don't care about the playbook. What I want to teach our guys is how to tap in block. Um, because at the end of the day, if you can't do that, it doesn't matter what the X and the O say. That's so right. that was number one. Um, of course, number two was I wanted to get the competitive spirit going. Okay? So let's compete. Not compete against each other, but learn how to compete without the thought of failing. The fear of failing. That's competition. That competition is between you and you. <laughs> and right. can you line up every play and give me all you got um, to stack up days and be very consistent, right? So that's what I was looking for from that standpoint. Now, as far as the playbook was concerned, defensively, we went different than we did on offense. Defense, we threw everything in. Okay. Okay? Then offense, it was very – uh, progression. If we wasn't able to move to the next thing, we wasn't going to move. And so it was very slow as it became offense. But here is the thing. I want to run what we're going to run in the run game. I want to run that every day until we really good at it. I don't want to add no more runs. I want one run. And this run right here, we got to be our bread and butter. Okay. And then in the past game, it was more about timing and then how how can we you know get that so and I base stuff right. um, and, and that's what I looked at in spring ball, uh, coach. Uh, I appreciate that answer. That's uh part, but not traditional in terms of uh you know what you said with 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 getting the new coordinators in. So let let me ask you this: as we have a lot of young coaches that listen to this podcast, yeah. they're probably in the position of where they're. Looking forward to interviewing for some of these offensive coordinator uh, positions, and, and, and this is a unique one, as you mentioned. How how do you um, present that to a potential coordinator? Uh, you know, that's coming in, and he he lays down his big playbook and says, "Hey, coach, this is what I do right here on third down." And you're like, "Nah, I, I, I want this to kind of fit what I want." So, how how did you go through and get the candidates? Uh, you don't have to talk about the process yeah. if you don't want to, but but you know, yeah. how, how do you get guys and let them understand this is this is how we're approaching this deal? Well, I think the, the, the main thing what I was looking for, um, Mario, was the ability to get somebody who's open and willing. Yeah. All coaches are not open and willing. Absolutely. Right? Absolutely. They got they got what they got, they know what they know, and that's it. And so open and willing was very, very important to me. And and so that's why I led with it. I didn't care about your play. And I told each candidate, I don't care about the play. They're like, well, coach, man, I want to get on the board. I want to show you this. Right. I said, man, I, we, we're going to do that part. Yeah. But I right. need to know, are you open and willing to change? Because in a season, things change. In a game, things change, right? And if your playbook, whatever your system is, doesn't um, relate to the situation, 
then what are you going to do? Are you going to be willing to open up and change your thought process based off of um, the situation that you're in? And so that was my number one thing. I wanted open and willing God. And uh, that's how I chose. I chose these two guys because they were open and willing to grow, learn, stretch, move. And because I knew how I was going to approach it right. was going to be different than anybody else um, around when you talk about implementing a new offense and a new defense. Well, you may mention other coaches. This nine years for you there at Campbell, uh, going into your 10th season uh, there. I had the, the, the I don't want to say privilege because we went down there and got our bus kicked, but I was at Davidson College in 2016 back when you were in the Pioneer Football League, went, went up yeah. to Campbell and, and got and got roasted up pretty good, although they've, they've turned things around there at Davidson. Yeah. Um, it, it, you know, you've been there going into your 10th season, but you had this humongous, in my opinion, transition from FCS, non, non-scholarship to to, to you know, FCS scholarship football, which I, you know, I thought you guys had a, had a, a, a pretty good roster when we rolled down there for a non-scholarship program, but I, I know it's changed. You know, what was that transition like going through that process? You know, all of a sudden being able to go into schools and say, Hey, yeah, you know, we got a little change for you here. You know, this is, this is a little different. You, you already know how difficult it is to go into oh, yeah. a school and try to get somebody to come pay for you to play for you. Right. <laughs> right. I mean, that and, and have skills to be able to do it. And so you got to become, I think, when you're doing non-scholarship football, very specialized and then very different, which is probably why Davidson is, you know, successful today. If they got that triple option yeah. type stuff yeah. out of all different formations, well, you don't see that every day. And so I think it catches teams off guard. And, and I think, um, you know, to transition to scholarship, well, now you're going to get a different type of guy. Um, a guy that has the ability to get paid for what, what he does. And so uh, that conversation changes. Well, I had a four-year plan. In the fourth year, we were going to be the number one recruiting class. And um, and so we were able to do that right. um, based yeah. off of a process. See, to me, everything is a process. Nothing is from A to Z overnight. And it's a process, even my coaching career. So nine years at the same spot, even though it's been two different type of jobs. Um, and, and I think the difference is, is that you have the ability now to say that I can pay for you. Right. And I can help you get to where you want to get to. Yeah. And, and I yeah. think that's the difference, man, is when you say, I can pay and give you a scholarship. <laughs> you gonna have different conversations with different people. Yeah, it's a it's a different type of cat that ends up walking through the doors uh, at that point in time. And 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 I know you had great kids, non scholarship, but once again, talent level does does change with um, that. And uh, you know, you may mention of I was definitely going to transition there. You you were able to have the, the a, a tremendous sonic class. I mean, I. I have a, a couple of buddies on your staff there, and I, I think when they were tweeting it out, it's, it was kind of scrolling through the the rankings, and I was seeing FC, FBS programs even ranked behind you, you know. And, and I know those rankings don't mean everything all the time, right, but right. when when you're able to go and have a, a class like that, you definitely want to boast that. Uh, well, how how were you able to get there in four years? I mean, right. you know, I, I like I said, I've been to Campbell, uh, fantastic yeah. facilities, but once again, it's kind of in the middle of nowhere. Uh, yeah. You know, how how were you able to make that happen? Well, I think it's it's about being able to help young men get to where they want to get to. And you having a plan to show them how you're going to do that. Mm-hmm. It's not just you come play for us and you're going to get to the league or you're going to get an opportunity to go get a great job. We got history with that, right? So, um, you know, even when we were non-scholarship, we were able to have five guys, you know, be on a um, training camp roster. Right. And so we have the ability to say, We've done it. This is how it looks. This is what it's going to take you. And you don't have to go to Florida State or Nebraska or Miami or Clemson or, well, I won't say Alabama, but you go there, you're definitely getting paid. Um, <laughs> you, you don't have to go to these places to be able to get an opportunity, right? right? What you need to do is know who you marry. Can the coach help train you and develop you for the league, not the other way around. And that was a conversation that I was having with these guys, you know, these four stars that we was able to get, um, guys who can play, man. I mean, I, you know, I, 
I, I never thought <laughs> that, um, you know, these type of dudes, now I thought we were going to have number one recruiting class, but I thought we were going to have, you know, a lot of two stars and three stars. Yeah. You know, you were going to get some fours and, and, and some of these guys were five before they got hurt. And so, um, you know, these, these are the type of things that I wanted to show, um, the parents, um, and, um, the kid that, man, I can help you, um, get to where you want to get to. Now, you, you know, you're, you're, in, you're, uh, is it year, are you going into year four FCS with scholarship? Yes. Okay. So going into year four here, uh, you know, I, I know you, you, you're cooking on this program, you know, trying to get it to, you know, um, championship level. Let's talk really quick about your playing career. You obviously, uh, you know, played 10 years, started 10 years in, in, in the National Football League uh, for the Carolina Panthers, had the opportunity to go play in the Super Bowl. Um, you won new, two national championships at Nebraska. Uh, yeah. You know, as, as a coach early on, you were able to win uh, two state titles at First Assembly uh, Christian School in three years, you know. Three totally different programs. You start talking about the the Panthers in Nebraska and this in in this Christian school that you were at. What 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 is some commonalities that you saw in those programs that that kind of breeded that championship level of of, of, mm-hmm. of football that you have to that you need to move over there to Campbell? Well, commitment, right? The commitment to the process of of being great every day and not back down from that commitment. And so, if you commit to any process. Along the way, what you're going to find is transformation because it's going to transform you along this process um, as you pick up more information. And um, and so that was the number one thing I saw there. The other thing I saw was a brotherhood, a true brotherhood that um, I got your back, you got my back, um, and we believe in the same thing. Um, and, and then I think the belief of we was all champions, you know, like we knew we were going to win no matter where we was at. All the guys that was on these teams that, that was able to elevate themselves to these type levels, they all had a belief that they were really good. Um, and so I believe you gotta, you got to already believe that before you walk in. And, um, and so that, that's what we did. And, um, and that's what I'm trying to bring here. Right. Well, you got to go get them right in the door. You can't, Train somebody to that. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. <laughs> you, you can only get them so far. Right. But now, if you pick them right and you bring them in the door and you develop them from that standpoint, now you got some cooking. Okay. And I think that's what happened in Nebraska in '92 when my class came in. Um, Nebraska was always winning the Big A championship, could never win the big one. Our class come in, they, they rated us number three of all time. So that's how good this class was. And, and then, but everybody in that class thought they was, you know, champions already, right? right? So they come from that already. And so it, it was easy to get it going. And then now you look at the Panthers, we won a 15. And um, what we, John Fox, the first thing is every coach that was on these teams was a championship coach, okay? And he had that mentality that we're going to teach hard work and we're going to have some fun doing it, okay? And um, so when you look at John Fox, that's when he came. He, he came in. He got some other dudes. You get Julius Peppers. You get Chris Jenkins. You start to get these type people. Steve Smith. All of a sudden, man, you start to accumulate a lot. I think the biggest one was uh, going to get Stephen Davis so you can run the football. Um, and then you had some great dudes, Princeton Bugner, that you bring in on defense and Al Wallace. And, and then all of a sudden, Dan Morgan was already here. I was already here. Mike Ruck was already here. And then you start adding some pieces, man. And, and that's what happened. Um, you got guys now that come into the locker room that understand what it means to win. And we're going to keep each other accountable. Man, we didn't need the coach. Right. So all those teams, did not need the coach to push him. I I, I love how you uh, <laughs> you didn't directly relate this, but as I'm sitting here listening to you, it's kind of like the things start changing when the Jimmy and Joes start elevating themselves. The the, the type of guy that you brought in the door, and it, yeah. it's kind of lining up what you got going on in Campbell, bringing in 
you know, yeah. these type of Jimmys and Joes, the caliber class that you sign. And so, um, you know, and, and, and then tying it to spring ball with the, that big emphasis on number two was, was the competition and, and just having those guys compete, bringing the best of them. I, I, hopefully we're, we're brewing on a really big season there for you. Now, uh, before I got off with you, I, I, I did want to talk about uh, – you know, you had this long playing career. Obviously, you sat yeah. in the locker room for some for some great coaches uh, to to kind of build some ch- championship pedigree, both in college at the professional level. Before being a head coach, you know, with all due respect, very very short career in, in the actual coaching field. You know, you're a head coach extremely fast. Yeah. You know, so who are some of those guys as a player that you looked up and maybe modeled your coaching style as as you got into the profession? Yeah, well, um, number one is Tom Osborne. Of course. So our whole program is built around what we were doing in the 90s. We was we already had nutrition. We already had the weight room. We already see we started all this. The unity council, uh, all these things, the, the sports psychologists, we had all these things already in the 90s with, with um, Coach Osborne. And what is that saying? Coach Osborne looked at the total person and said, what do I need professionally around this person to unlock his greatness? That, that's what he was doing. And that's what we do here. Um, the same setup. Um, and so uh, I bring in professionals to work with us to be part of our football program to unlock their greatness. And this is, this is what we do from the tutoring to the academic. All that stuff was um, created um, in, in Lincoln. And, and Coach Osborne was 30 years ahead of his time. Right. Um, the other thing that he, he taught me was reps. You need reps. So we used to do stations, okay? We had three, we would have four stations, two, you know, one, one group against another group, and we would go 15 reps in each station. So you imagine how many reps you get throughout a practice opposed to getting 30 because you're going one, two, and threes. Now you're getting all the reps because ain't nobody subbing in for yeah. you because you go into a station. And and I thought that was the most pivotal part of us being so successful is we knew our stuff subconsciously. Yeah. It was it was trained in us. Um and I and I take that um to what we have now. And then Coach Fox, what what he really showed me was the ability to add the hard work with a purpose and a plan. Right. We call it industriousness, but that's what Coach Fox called it. Right. It was the cornerstone in the pyramid um, that, um, um, hey, man, it, it, John Wooden, John Wooden Pyramid, the cornerstones is industriousness and enthusiasm. And this is what we built the Carolina Panthers in. It was those two things. Bring your cornerstones to work every day. And, and that's what I tell my God. I said, listen, guys. It's a lot of people who work hard that doesn't have anything. So it's not about just working hard. It's about working hard with a purpose and a plan. Now you're doing some work. And until you get that, then you are just wasting your time uh, spinning your wheels. And, and I'm trying to teach my guy how to do that every single day, everywhere. Because where you are in one place, you are that same person everywhere else Absolutely. and so let's let's develop that uh personality coach i love it man that's a heck of a spot to kind of end on uh you know, uh, best of luck to you. Congrats on the class once again. Uh, best of luck to you as you close out spring here over the next couple of days. And then uh, can't wait to see what you guys are able to put together in the fall. Hey, I appreciate it, man. And uh, hey, look, October the 22nd, me and prime time is going against each other. Oh, wow. So everybody better be ready to look at that. <laughs> Two old head, uh, people back going head to head. And it's gonna be their homecoming, so it's gonna be sixty thousand. Oh yeah! And some of my kids have never seen what an HBCU look like uh, uh, on on homecoming. So it's gonna be fun. Uh, hopefully, we we on NFL Network. Uh, that's what we're shooting for, and um, it's gonna be a great time, man. Because two old NFL guys get a chance to play each other, yeah, and um, open up the football world to both sides of the spectrum, the HBCU. And then the um, PWI, so it's Man. gonna be fun. Well, I'm ha- happy you mentioned that. I'll definitely be tuning in. And uh, once again, good luck this spring and the rest of spring and uh, in, into the fall. Thank you, sir. All right, thanks, Coach.
Thanks for listening to this week's episode of Inside the Headset. If you heard anything on this episode that you would like to learn more information about, head over to afcapodcast.com where you can find every episode and all of the corresponding show notes. While you're there, take a second to rate, review, and subscribe to the podcast. If you have any questions, comments, or suggestions for the show, please let us know by sending an email to podcast at afca.com. Make sure to follow the podcast on Twitter at Inside the Headset and tag it when you share each episode. You can stay up to date with all things AFCA by following the at We Are AFCA Twitter account. Every episode of Inside the Headset can also be found on your favorite audio streaming platforms such as Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and YouTube. If you are not currently a member of the AFCA, be sure to find us online at AFCA.com and apply to join over 10,000 NFL, college, and high school coaches from around the country who are striving to be the best they can be. With an AFCA membership, you gain invaluable access to the annual AFCA convention, the bi-monthly magazine, and the new and improved digital library, which contains thousands of videos and articles contributed by hundreds of current and former football coaches. You can also visit AFCAinsider.com to sign up for our free weekly email newsletter on the right-hand side of the screen. It comes out every Tuesday at lunch and is filled with great articles and stories written by many of the same coaches you hear on the podcast. It's geared to help you become a better coach tomorrow than you are today. Be sure to connect with me on Twitter at Coach Mario Price. And remember, the AFCA is not just an annual convention. It is an association that continually promotes education, guidance, and networking. But it is also so much more than that. The AFCA is about celebrating the past and educating the future. It is about developing great coaches who will produce great teams and even better people. So invest in your skill set and impact today by engaging with the AFCA.